Welcome to another episode of Football Tailgaters where we talk all about the NFL. My name is Aaron. I am a Cowboys fan. And here I have with me Andy, the unbiased football fan. And the Ams, the Texan Jets fan. And today we have, in today's three topics, we talk about whether 49ers Debo Samuel will be in another team anytime soon after his trade request. And second, former Cardinals running back Chase Edmonds, who is now uh, with the Miami Dolphins, says the Cardinals do not have a winning culture. It is also known that they commit only to the draft instead of the free agency and trades. Do you agree or disagree? And lastly, mock drafts have Panthers taking a QB in the draft. Is their best scenario Darnold, Baker, Garoppolo? Or look for a fresh talent in the draft. We'll start off with Debo Samuel's surprise trade request. Is he going to another team? And if so, what will that team give up? Yams, you go first. Well, this gets me really excited because, of course, you guys know I am the Jets fan. And I really, really think that the Jets should make a push for Debo Samuel. I think it would elevate the Jets big time. And it just makes sense. Robert Salah came from the San Francisco um, team along with Mike LaFleur. They were both on the San Francisco team. So they, who knows Debo Samuel's talent more than those two. So I definitely do think that the GM, Joe Douglas, will make a move. And if you see all the Vegas bets, the favorite to win the trade with Debo Samuel is the Jets. The Jets just make sense. I feel like they will be able to do, utilize Debo's talents more than anybody. What I think they should probably give up, I, I'm i very conservative or or cheap because I am a fan of the Jets. So I, I would like to have great talent, but I also don't want them to give up so much. Yeah. I, I think what's reasonable is probably I'll give for the Jets to give the pick 10 which is the pick that they got from the Jamal Adams trade. They can also give up the fifth round pick, which was given to them via the Pittsburgh Steelers when we traded Avery Williamson over to them. So I would mm-hmm. give those two picks to San Francisco. San Francisco. What do you that's think, it? Andy? Yes, that's it. I mentioned that I was cheap, so... <laughs> Well, you know, they would hang up the phone. That's a dream scenario. Yes, they would hang up the phone. It's a dream scenario. I mean, when you're serious, give us a call back and then we will will discuss. (laughs) Never dealing with you again. Well, I'm giving the 10th pick. No, let's let's be more serious here. And and, and the second (laughs) option here, let's say that they do hang up on you and that you have to. I mean, they do hang up on you. So you have to give a better uh, like some like a better offer. So. Think of a better offer if you were the Jets. All right, fine. I will throw in a fourth round pick. Oh my gosh! I, <laughs> you know what? After that, I wouldn't even. Then you know I, that's it. I don't think I will give up anything. You won't give up anything. <laughs> no. So you don't think basically he has that talent to get you to the next level? Then. Yes, yes, he does. But I, I, we're in rebuild mode, and I don't want to. When are they not in rebuild? Shut mode? up. <laughs> 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 I understand they're always in rebuild, but they're changing. They're doing good things now. Well, okay, sticking with that scenario, I, I will mention one thing. What? I do feel that Joe Douglas is in. I won't say a hot seat, but a it's getting seat. warmer. Right. So I do feel like he needs to make a really good push or hard push for Debo Samuel. And and I know they were there when Tyreek Hill came available. It wasn't such a strong bid as the Miami Dolphins did. I mean, Miami Dolphins kind of give a big, they give a lot. They give a lot. I thought it was close to what Miami was Close, but not that much. But anyways, since they were there along the talks to get Tyreek, I mean, I think they'll be in. They'll they'll be in there for Debo, Debo. Mm-hmm. Mm, but if if you recall, when is the last time the Jets were good? When was that? Two thousand nine, two thousand ten. Okay, so two thousand nine, two thousand ten. 
And do you remember how that team was built? Well, a little history about myself. I wasn't a fan of the Jets in 2009. I became a fan in 2010, and I started to learn about football in 2010. So do I remember how they were built? No, I remember Hard Knocks. I remember Rex Ryan was there. Mark Sanchez was the rookie. Uh, we had um, San Antonio Holmes from Pittsburgh. Okay, free agent. Mm-hmm, free agent. Or trade, I don't remember. Um, also, Ladanium Tomlinson, running back, also from right? another team. So, and then they had, um, I, I mean, they did have some of that they drafted, like Mark Sanchez, like you said, and Darrell Rivas in the years prior. Mm -hmm. But a lot of that team was built from from getting players from other teams and they went to the AFC championship twice. So if you want to win and get to that next level, I really strongly believe that you have to get these top talented players. And San Antonio Holmes was just like, wasn't he just a winning uh, a Super Bowl wide receiver? And then Ladanian Tal Tomlinson, LT, he is just remembered as one of the best running backs of all times. I'm not saying that Debo Samuels is one of the best wide receivers of all times, but I do believe he does have the strengths to get you to that next level. As so that I think the Jets should, if um, if they are interested, they need to give, in my opinion, like two first round picks. But, two first round picks. Yes. Okay. Maybe. Okay. What you mean, 2022 and 2023? Yeah, you have two this year, so you don't have to give... You can um, give one up this year and year. then one and for then. next year. It and doesn't have to be two year. this year. Yeah, it's too much. It's too much for the scenario that the Jets are in. I mean, they, they weren't they giving up two first-round picks for Tyreek Hill? Wasn't that the offer? I, you know what? I don't remember the offer, but, you know, comparing the two GMs when, when you were mentioning when they were good, that was Mike Tannebaum. And they're very two different GMs. I understand that they built the free agency. But don't you guys think that the NFL is changing? Don't, we, don't you think the NFL draft is becoming... The players are coming out are more talented and they're more likely to get that start? Uh, maybe I um, agree with the quarterbacks, but not like other, other positions. Yeah, I would Ooh. have to say the same. But... So, I uh, you have to give two first round picks for this guy, or else you're not going to be in the conversation to get mm -hmm. the trade. If you don't believe he it has that type of skill set to get you to that next level, um, then yeah, don't even don't even pick up the phone. Now, one thing that you have to take into account, whichever team takes him, um, is that he actually said that he didn't. He just he would prefer playing one position as we know the 49ers have played him as running back and wide receiver. And that's how he was such an explosive talent. And if teams are just going to be getting a player that just wants to be a position, that's another, like a, that's a red flag. So I would have to talk with them and make sure it's like, Hey, well, we like this explosive skill set that you have as a wide receiver and a running back. We'll give you this money that you're asking for, but you have to play in this way. Um, and, and these types of positions and this and this system that we'll be creating for you. If not, then don't need, if we shouldn't even talk or discuss it because I don't believe you take a lot of his talent away if you just put him as a wide receiver as has he has requested already. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I so for me, I think I believe he's just going to be staying in, for, in in San Francisco. I'll, I'll I believe he was such an explosive player for them that. They'll just figure out a way to pay him and to just make it work for him to just continue being that, that player that he was. I know that he wa that he wants out because he wants to be more closer to home in South Carolina. Hence, the Panthers could be a landing spot. Um, but I think that he I, I, it's going to be hard for the for the 49ers to give him up. It, I mean, for them to actually win here offers, it has to be two first round picks. Mm hmm. You don't think Two first round, uh, yeah. you don't think he would um like hold out on it, kind of sit out, not you know, um kind of not protesting in, in a way to like get out of there, but just not be as productive as he's been in the past years, and maybe even sit out. Do you think he's capable of doing that if he's if it's that extreme? 
Yeah, I for sure. Uh, I think he can sit out. Um, the, here's the situation, though, with the 49ers here. They're in a little bit of a pickle because they don't have any salary cap space. Mm-hmm. I believe they're last of all the teams. They're the, like, the last ones that have like space. I believe it's under a million, actually. So it's it's going to be very tough for them to figure things out. So it, it might, I mean, if the salary cap is just putting up the them in like in a corner they might have to like have to figure out a trade for him i don't know i haven't looked into jimmy garoppolo's contract with him how much he's eating up in the contract but they're gonna have to make some changes especially if we're coming into the we're getting close to the draft so i think that they need to really figure this thing out with with Debo because he is one uh he has put him into that into that level they almost went to the super bowl because of him not because of Jimmy Garoppolo, because of Debo Samuel. I have a question. Who, who, in your opinion, is better? E- either of you can answer. Debo Samuel or Tyreek Hill. You can go first, Aaron. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, the way I think about it, okay, so I'm looking at his contract right now. And he's going to be an unrestricted free agent in 2023. So wouldn't they want to? I mean, teams might some teams might be desperate to trade for him right now. Wouldn't uh, the best scenario for the 49ers be trade him away as fast as possible? So you know you can get away with that uh, little bit of salary cap, and <clears throat> and you can get some value back rather than just letting him go next year he's asking for the trade right now i don't know why he just didn't wait this season and go into the next one to go to a different team rather than um you know requesting a trade right now but you know maybe it's that bad for him but i was thinking if he were to be traded to another team if it it would the salary cap does matter and picks does matter as well so i i feel like um the jets are a very good option I feel like the Green Bay Packers would be a good option as well because they don't have a star receiver right there. Assuming um if assuming if the team is okay with respecting his decision of staying as one position, which is most likely gonna be wide receiver, because running backs don't last as long and you know, it, it's just uh, it's a weird re- scenario right now for the running back situation. So I think he would be a wide receiver and he'd fit great somewhere around with the Jets, Packers, even the Chiefs not that they lost Hill. Uh, and I think I would stick with those three teams for now. Those would be the safest pick. My personal pick would be the Cowboys in a dream scenario, but I don't think that's going to happen. That's going to take quite a bit, but who knows? Jerry Jones might want to, you know, risk it all for getting a, a trio back up again. Now that they lost Amari Cooper. But if I had to pick out of the Jets, Packers and Chiefs, I kind of like how the Packers would work out because simply because of Aaron Rodgers and they kind of have to almost go all in again to the Super Bowl because he's getting close to that age of where he might start declining you know you gotta get him if I were the Packers I want a Super Bowl as soon as possible at this point and they did pick up Sammy Watkins so that's that would be a great compliment to Debo Samuel if they were to stick with wide receiver and they for the Packers they have uh it's the 22 overall pick the 28 and then it starts getting higher 53 59 i think i would give up definitely some first rounders uh i would give up the 22 easily no problem that because i mean uh, i would probably pick a wide receiver if i were them as well but who knows i might be wrong um so i would give up the first round for this one and i think they have a, a first rounder for the next one and uh, who knows? Uh, I just throw something in there that just uh, gets the 49ers excited because it's going to take quite a bit of value or I guess of like a a packet a trade package for for them to even like consider trading. them. But like I was saying at the very beginning, I think it's wise for the 49ers to get rid of them right now and get some value back rather than letting him be an unrestricted free agent because you you just lose and the 49ers are already in in a weird spot as it is so i think it's wise for them to just get rid of him now don't stick with him because he's probably not even gonna like it that much 
So get rid of him, get some value back, and I think he would probably be with the Packers, but I honestly, it's really hard to tell who he's going to land with right now. I don't know what you guys think. I mean, also take into account that the 49ers also almost went to the Super Bowl, and and we all, I mean, the majority, I would think that they would suggest that it was because of Debo Samuel. So if you take that away from the team, they're going to go very low, and they're going to start have to figure things out in a different way. I mean, if Kyle Shanahan can figure that out, then 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 okay. But it's going to make it harder. He he was making it easier for them to get to that level. Mm-hmm. So if he leaves, um, it's gonna. Ha- I I see what you mean about the Green Bay Packers, but they're late first round picks, and with the Jets, they're early. I mean, if I was 49ers, I prefer trading with one of them. One because you want to trade it to one of uh, somebody in the AFC. You want uh, to solidify going, the NFC. I was more so going with um, who I think he fits best. Uh, and for who I think he's actually going to land in, I, I, it's really hard to tell. But if I had to pick, it'd probably be the Jets, yes. Yeah, and to your uh, question, Yams, I would think that... It, uh, I would think Debo Samuel is better at the moment... Um, than Tyreek Hill and it has to be that we have to use his skill set as a wide receiver and a running back and I think Mm -hmm. he's built um, uh, like um, Aaron was saying if we're looking at teams that it's better fit for him it's it has to be a team that's like ready to win because Mm -hmm. putting him in a team that that is still going to be struggling it's 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 kind of hard to figure things out yeah the (laughs) the Jets I mean it's not he's not going to go there to win a Super Bowl right away but if you put him in Green Bay or something like he gets that to that that's not going to happen Green Bay is not going to happen no we don't don't know that it's not going to it's not going to happen I think it's a possibility Uh, I think it's slim it's slim it's slim but isn't Green isn't San Francisco 49ers a kryptonite to Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, or, it's very like, slim. Like, or you know, they're just aren't they just rivals? Okay, like they're uh, not. Move them over. Thinking... Move them over to the AFC then, and that would have mm-hmm. to be probably somewhere around the Chiefs or the Colts. Some someone who needs another star in the wide receiver. Yeah, yeah, I I, I can see the Chiefs. Yeah, so and they to... do have some cap space, but their picks mm-hmm. are also high. That's the problem. I just see more the Jets happening because they have lower. Higher, yeah, higher they, up in the they, draft. they have the number four in the <laughs> yeah, n- and, and yeah. So I guess to why I asked about the Tyreek and Debo because the Jets offered the Kansas City the number thirty-five, the number thirty-eight, and the number sixty-nine pick. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, that was a lot. I, that was a lot. Yeah, that is a lot. So. I mean, if I was if I was San Francisco, I would probably prefer if it was the Jets because of the high picks. But yeah. again, you got to give me two of them. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to listen to your offer unless it's two first round right. picks. And probably they're going to be asking for a little bit something else, like a fifth rounder or something else just to make it more. And maybe the Jets also get something back in return, uh, maybe a late rounder or something this year. But... It has to be two first rounds. And, and I mean, think of it this way. It, it's not like every time that you're going to be drafting a, a player, they, they're they really, really good right off the bat. I mean, a lot of these picks that are like top 10 picks, they're just like busts. So here you're giving two. You already have an extra one. I mean, you got a, the Jets got a really, really good deal when they traded Jamal Adams away. They got a ton of first round picks. So... Imagine if you trade, if you use those round picks as leverage and you get Debo Samuel. I mean, it puts you to another level. And I believe the Jets do need another another weapon for, for Zach Wilson, especially because Zach Wilson, you kind of, when you draft the quarterback, you kind of want to know how good they are in their first three years and if they can get you to that next level or you start thinking about somebody else, especially at the NFL at this moment, um, how they're, how they're playing their quarterback. So I think it's, it'll be a good weapon for zach wilson and to to see if zach wilson is a future for the jets mm-hmm. okay so Hopefully. to conclude this 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 first question uh if he were to get traded uh realistically speaking like uh not not like your dream scenario or anything like where you think logically he's gonna land in what team is it you guys can go whoever 
I'll go first. I'm easy. And uh, okay, a little dreaming too. I think <laughs> the Jets for sure. I think they have a really good solid, solid case here. They went after Tyreek, and mm-hmm. they're most likely gonna go after Debo. And, okay. I Andy? think it will work out between oh, the Jets or San Francisco. I th- I think uh, Jets or know, San lose. Francisco. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think they'll work it out. Yeah, I think uh, they're gonna work it out too. But if I had to pick a landing spot for him, I would say the Panthers. Um, the, that's his. The, that's his home. <laughs> that's his home. Uh, I know the coach is in a, a in, in a hot seat, yeah. but <laughs> I think that that he'll try. That they're gonna the general manager, um, which he also needs to show how good he is. Even though he's new, he can be mm-hmm. like, "Boom, you got me. Look what I got you. I got you to that next level." And mm-hmm. and he's gonna be happy because uh, Debo's gonna be at home and he's mm-hmm. gonna get paid. So and then the coach is gonna be safe, even if he doesn't land the quarterback. I'm sure whatever quarterback he has is gonna be way better than what they had before. So that may be even safest to see. So <laughs> and what if, would be the trade idea there with Panthers? Same Oof. thing, first rounders, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First it's gotta first it's gotta rounders. be first rounders. Like it's guaranteed that they're gonna get first rounders back. There's no way. Exactly. So I think he's gonna uh, stay in 49ers, but if he, uh, if uh, a scenario that he will land will be the Panthers. That okay, that's a, that's very interesting. Okay, yeah, I, I mean now that you put it that way, it, it does seem like it could really be the Panthers. But I'm gonna go with the Jets because they are not afraid to put in the amount of draft picks that they did with Hill, and I think. They're the most likely now that I'm like fully like processing it and, and trying to like, you know, think of these scenarios. I think the Jets makes a lot more sense than any other team. But anyways, let's move on to the Arizona Cardinals or I guess really Chase Edmonds. He was talking about um, the Cardinals do not have a winning culture. And also uh, to mention, they focus on the draft only and they don't really commit to free agents or, or trades. Do you, do you guys agree or disagree? We'll start with Yams. Something about the culture, I can't I can't speak on it. Well, I can because I, I am a Jets fan. I think we had that problem with, the, with not having a winning culture. And it, that always kind of stemmed and started with the head coach. With the Cardinals, I I feel like they at least they tried – when they when they got Cliff Kingsbury, he did turn around the team when he got hired. So I know they were in the slums for some time. And the the GM, um, I feel like he has made moves. I just don't know what's going on now with Kyler Murray not wanting or wanting to get paid. Like I understand your pl- the players want to get paid. Mm-hmm. The problem I see here is, I think it might be, I don't think it's the talent. I think it's the coach problem. And the only reason why I say that is because I feel that the Arizona has reached the talent or the ceiling that they did last year. I think to make a playoff run or even a Super Bowl run was last year. So I feel that maybe the coach, the head coach, has reached his ceiling and his playbook is just running out. His time is running out as head coach. So... Yeah, I can see that the culture is running out because or the culture winning it's not it's not there anymore. It's not he's not like a Mike Tomlin that's will always keep the team in there even though they have crappy talent. They always well, have a shot the Pittsburgh Steelers. Wasn't he compared um Cliss Kimberry? Wasn't he compared to Sean McVay at some point by some people? At the maybe, beginning, yeah, maybe at the beginning. At the beginning, right? Cuz that probably was like a very young. bold statement. I don't think uh, I don't think he's like there at all. Um, well, go uh, yeah. for it. Give us your opinion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I I think I mean I don't know because I'm not in like uh ba- back in the, in the I guess in the background of like behind the scenes I mean, uh but it, it just seems like they're they're in a weird uncomfortable situation where maybe they just don't mesh really well as a team. And like like the whole situation with Colin Murray is kind of awkward, and Kingsbury, you know, like maybe eventually, like very very soon, they're gonna start questioning: Is he really good enough to coach this team, to lead them, you know, uh, to try and go take them to the Super Bowl? Uh, I I think it just 
it's they would have to kind of play it out as it is what they have i i think they definitely need to reset but i mean if they hear these rumors about like oh they're not uh about the winning culture and, and stuff like that they kind of need to get together and form themselves and motivate themselves to push each other because they have the talent they do have the talent to go all the way it's just you know they they need to be committed and the, and the coach needs to you know push them because i mean the head coach is a lot of the times you know kind of kind of like the ones who motivate them sometimes it is like the captain of the team but i mean i don't really see kyler murray being uh i guess like the head honcho of the of the whole team or anything um jj watt is still there right yeah he's still there yeah i i think he he'd be a great guy he he's been he he's electric you know he's you can feel his energy when he goes onto the field and he just i feel like he needs to also push the team and try not to get them divided and and not get them distracted with all these rumors that are kind of mostly negative and, and it's going against them they they can't afford to take a step back because they might just have to not i'm not saying that they're gonna do it anytime soon but like if they keep you know doing the wrong things and 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 letting these rumors get to them they're, they're gonna have to do something about it trade players away or, or just blow everything up because it's just a very weird situation right now for them i don't know what you think about andy honestly i think it's just a disgruntled ex-employee chase edmonds i mean he was okay he was good as a running back this last year for them as the second running back behind um connor james james so, connor yeah yeah james connor so he he left uh he he went to miami and he saw this uh, report about Kyler Murray having some issues with the Arizona Cardinals that he wants to get paid. And he just wanted to say something negative because he just didn't like it. Maybe he had some issues of him wanting to get paid and he didn't. Now he's in Miami. So I think he just got a he just got a little bit of a of a disgruntle against the against the Cardinals because he says that they that they commit to only drafting instead of free agency, which I, I completely disagree with them, right? Right off the bat, I mean, look look what the, their roster. They have James Conner. He came from Pittsburgh. Look at mm-hmm. DeAndre Hopkins. He came from Houston. Look mm-hmm. at A.J. Green. He came from Cincinnati. Look at Zach Ertz. He came from, the, uh, from Philadelphia. I mean, I can go on and on. Even with a defensive side, you just mentioned J.J. Watt. He came from Houston. So he just said something that he was just a disgruntled employee. I mean, if we look at a, a somebody on the opposite side, look at Christian Kirk. He went. He was the uh, wide receiver for the Cardinals, and then he went to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And they asked him, well, hey, uh, um, Chase Edmonds, he actually said all these negative things about the Cardinals. They don't have a winning culture. What do you think? And Christian Kirk was like, no, I didn't have any of that any of that mindset there. We were all working hard and we were trying to, uh, I, I work well with Kyler Murray and, and we were just, it just, things didn't work out in the end. But, but I mean, there, there was no, like, like not a winning culture. And he also even praised Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury. Um, I do agree that they have some problems, like a lot of teams, like, I mean, Kyler Murray wants to get paid like other, like other players. I mean, and Rodgers wanted to get paid. I mean, there's mm-hmm. it's very normal. Um, they do need to win, though. I mean, I don't think like it's not a winning culture, but they need to figure things out because also uh, Chase Edmonds says that he compared the Cardinals to like the Ravens that they figure they just figure it out to win and be a winning a winning team. Well, yeah, I mean, we all wish that for our teams, but I mean, it doesn't going to work out in the end. So you, they, they're just trying to to figure it out. I, am, I mean, that's why they got Hopkins. That's why they got Zach Ertz. That's why they keep getting these players. So, I mean, I disagree with, with Chase Edmonds. He's just a disgruntled ex-employee. And, um, and, I mean, winning cures everything. So they just need to win. And Cliff Kingsbury is going to be safe. And I mean, if Kyler Murray played a little bit better and was and finished the games that he would needed to be that he needed to win, I'm sorry, then mm-hmm. I think we would have been having a, co- a completely different discussion. But I don't think that they have a, a not a winning culture. So, mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and, and just to add to that, you mentioned all those great players are on that team. That's why I said I think they've reached their ceiling as a team and as a head coach. I think their run would have been this last season to make a run to the playoffs or even Super Bowl. Look at all the weapons you mentioned. So I think it is. I think it's the head coach. And actually, reading here on ESPN, um, Kingsbury has coached has always fallen off in the second season, the second half of the season. So his record starts to tumble in the second half of the season. That's happened nine times in mm-hmm. his career. I mean, if we look at the roster, I mean, I, I know you said that they're amazing players, but, I mean, James Conner, he, he is good. He played well for them. DeAndre DeAndre Hopkins, I'll con- he's considered one of the like top three wide receivers or top two. And then, I mean, well Zach like Ertz... I don't know. I mean, he's been having some struggles. I mean, maybe these these players are they need to start upgrading. But it's also, I mean, the scheme of things. I mean, if you look at the Cardinals and how Kyler Murray like functions with the team, he does play like really. It's like a I don't know. It looks like a stock market. He like throughout the whole game, he does some amazing plays, and then all of a sudden you're just like, whoa, what what was that? You know, so. Um, he has had some struggles throughout the games, but then he plays really well. So I think um, they just need to figure things out. And it might be the coach. It might be that it's not a um, – they're not focused enough or there's just something that's just missing. Maybe that they're just not talented enough at the end of the day. Or the schemes that they're putting for Kyler Murray and the team is not working for them. So it might be the head coach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I think so, yeah. Because, I mean, that you can't also forget they have, like, a pretty decent division, I would say, the, their group with the uh, Los Angeles uh, Rams. And then they got San Francisco, who, like, are, you know, it's a weird situation for them right now. And then Seattle, it's easy, I mean, easy to beat them, but they lost to them, uh, I think it was the very last game. Uh, I see right here they lost 38 to 30. Yep. So those are just losses that, you know, you, I mean, they did have Russell Wilson, of course, but I mean, they're overall the better team (laughs) than if you compare them from Seattle to, to them, to the Cardinals, they should have won that game. Uh, They finished, what was it? Let me see here. They finished 11 and six. They lost against the Green Bay Packers. That's fine. I mean. I guess. And then they lost against Carolina. Come on. Uh, they lost against L.A. That That's understandable. They lost against Detroit. Come on. Uh, Indianapolis. Understandable. And then they lost to Seattle. And then obviously um, in the postseason, they lost against uh, L.A. So Stock market sh- team. I'm telling you. Stock market up and down, up and down. <laughs> <laughs> they, they did at the, at the very beginning, like uh, Yams was saying, they um he does uh what's his name King, uh, Kingsbury does very well at the beginning they went on a hot streak of seven games in a row seven games in a row and then they started you know like you said stock market going up and down up and down so they need to focus more on what are they doing wrong in the second half of the season are they getting tired are they getting fatigued is their motivation going away or something or are they getting too confident because let's assume that's that's what happened they they won seven straight in a row and then they got cocky maybe or they lost confidence in after the first loss and ever since then that one it's been up and down up and down they got to start well, looking maybe in their own coaching staff and, and figure themselves out because, I mean, they got quite a bit of talent. Maybe they do need an upgrade or two, but I, I think mainly the winning culture should be uh, in the resp- in the hands of the coaching staff. They should be responsible for it. Yeah, even though we know that uh, Anthony, um, that Hopkins actually got injured and that really hurt them. So, But the coach needs to figure things out. If one of your best players goes down, what are you going to do to... Re- to- I guess solidify and, and not make it seem to make it harder for your team to win. So it does come down to the coach at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. For sure. So, okay. For the third one, last question. Uh, the mock drafts have a Panthers taking a QB in the draft. And I'm going to ask you guys, is the best scenario for the Panthers – they got a little bit of options, but I wouldn't say all of them are the best ones. Is their best scenario Darnold, sticking with Darnold, going with Baker, 
trading for Baker or getting Garoppolo? Or should they look into the draft and, and get something like a, a unique talent, like something like uh, Kenny Pickett, uh, assuming he does go that at that number, which I think they got the number 10 pick, right? Or what number do the Panthers have right now? They have the number six. Number six? I, I think it's definitely possible. Uh, what do you guys think? We'll start with the Yams. So I don't think they should get Baker. I think... That's a horrible mistake. I don't think Kate Baker's a good quarterback. If you want to just kind of maintain your team, okay, get Baker. But you have you have Darnold, and I'm I was I am a big fan of Darnold. Day. I still think he can be a quarterback in the NFL. I think he was dealt an ugly hand, and as a New York Jets and under Adam Gaze, his development was just awful awful over there so I do think with the right weapons and if he can stay healthy they can do something with Darnold Um, another option I would probably say is Garoppolo kind of what Andy you just mentioned it was kind of an interesting pick for Debo to go there since hometown and I think if they were to do like a trade that involved maybe a quarterback swap and then along with some other shinier trades and then Debo I can see that happening so but Again, I wouldn't go with if I'm Matt Rule and I'm and I'm also the GM of the Panthers. I don't know if I would get Garoppolo. Again, these are quarterbacks that are just they're just here to maintain. They're just I guess mm-hmm. game managers and Garoppolo might be a better op- option or a little bit of a better upgrade between Baker Mayfield and and himself and maybe even Darnold. I think maybe they're again I am maybe a little biased because I am a, a fan of Darnold. Uh, but I truly think what the best thing for them to do is pick Malik Willis in um, pick six. I think he has a high ceiling of talent, and I think I think they'll I think they'll do good with him. But again, interesting. Yeah. I don't know. Matt rules in the hot <laughs> seat. So, uh, what about you, Andy? Well, you you made a good point that Matt rules in a hot seat, and that's the situ that's the uncomfortable situation with the Carolina Panthers because there's always something going on, and it does it's not necessarily only like the Panthers. I'm sure a whole bunch of teams have this situation going on that he feels like he's going to get fired, so he needs to win now. But it might not be the smartest choice to the choices to be um, to win more games this season might be not might might not be the the answer for the future for them. So, I mean, if, if we're looking for the best quarterback out of Darnold, Baker, Garoppolo, I mean, Garoppolo, I mean, I would just go with Garoppolo because he has gone to the Super Bowl and almost went to the Super Bowl last year. But the problem with him is that he does get injured, which is annoying. But I mean, Darnold also hasn't even finished a, a full season. So there's that. And <laughs> with Baker, you also have a... Also. Yeah, you have a, pers- a personality issue. So... Um, I mean, if you look, if you think he has personality issues, I mean, that's just my opinion. He does. Um, but I mean, what I would do, like if, if we were talking in the perfect scenario to build for the future, I would just keep Darnold and draft a quarterback. Um, mm-hmm. Whoever they think is the best quarterback, whether it's Willis or Pickett at the top, because that's what we're thinking that there's those are the two top quarterbacks. Um, I would just try and test those two out. Um, either Darnold, maybe he with another year under his belt, um, and within the system, he gets a little bit more comfortable. I mean, you made a good point that he was de- given a really bad hand, dealt a bad hand when he was with the Jets. He wasn't developed well. I believe they didn't have like a quarterbacks coach, which was which is insane with the Jets. Um, you need you you need him like. You need some help for him so to develop it because it's very different from college to the NFL. So I would keep Darnold as a perfect scenario and draft the quarterback so that new quarterback can actually look and, and, and sit down and learn from, from the team. And I don't know, maybe if, Dar- if Darnold like just keeps on like sucking throughout the, t- throughout the, <laughs> throughout the year, then you put, pl- then you plug in the new quarterback and see what you have for him. Okay. But, that would be the perfect scenario, but I mean, if, since he's in a hot seat, I don't. They they might go after just getting a, the draft pick and just starting the draft pick right away, and uh-huh. Darnold sitting him down, or maybe or 
or maybe like they have a quarterback competition throughout the camp or even like we were like you were saying that that trade for Garoppolo and Darnold goes to San Fran and just be the backup for Trey Lance. I mean, that could be a case scenario there. But I think the perfect for, fit for them would be again to just stick with Darnold and pick up the draft. Uh pick up a draft a QB in the draft. Correct. Um now here's an interesting note. They have a first round pick, number six, but then they don't have a second or third round pick. Wouldn't you think that they need something other than a QB, assuming that they stick with Darnold? Because, I mean, oh gosh. So, obviously, well, not necessarily. I mean, look at their team. I mean, they have a lot of pieces already set in place. Mm-hmm. They, they do have DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson. Uh, oh, never Christian mind. They pick, they, yeah, but I mean, he's who, who, who knows? We'll see what happens with him this season <laughs> um, right. with his injuries. Uh, assuming that he is healthy, they got a great offense. Uh, defense, um, I'm trying to remember what they have on their defense that really sticks out to me. Um, I Did they stick with um, Stefan Gilmore? You know, they have Jace Horn. Yeah. J- oh, they, Jace he, got yeah, yeah, he, he got he, injured. Yeah, he got injured. Oh, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. He you're right, you're promising. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what about the defensive line, though? Is, yeah, no, that, like, that needs work. <laughs> it needs work. You don't time. think they would go defensive line by any chance in the first round pick, assuming that... Because who knows what their perspective is right now. Maybe they are comfortable with Darnold. Maybe Matt Rule is comfortable with Darnold. They all are in, in the in agreement that Darnold is a safe option. And they pick up a defensive lineman because they don't have any like actual stars like or at, at least they they need more stars at the very least. Um they might go defensive line here, but it's not a bad scenario that they do draft the quarterback in the first round with a very high pick and maybe give Darnold Darnold a little bit of competition because, okay, if you think about, okay, I want to get Baker or I want to get Garoppolo, you have to trade for both of them, no? So, like, what Mm -hmm. would you give up? Well, you have to give up Darnold. I mean, I think it's going to be a quarterback uh, swap because you can't have P.J. Walker, Darnold, and Baker on the same team. So... So in that scenario, you would trade Darnold, and you're getting back a quarterback. So either Baker or Garoppolo. I think personally, Garoppolo is better. Um, Baker does have his issues. I I, I don't know with him. Uh, okay, you get Garoppolo. You don't draft the QB in the first round because that wouldn't really make sense. How come you you trade for the guy? and then get a younger QB, you would probably mm-hmm. most likely go again defensively. Right. The only reason why I think they will draft one or, I mean, it makes sense either to trade as well because they were in the talks to get Deshaun Watson. It was the Browns and it was between Big the Browns. Big they had. Right. It was between them two. So I, I think they urgently feel like they need a quarterback. And, mm-hmm. I, and I know that my, uh, what's his name, Matt Rule, he is given full control, so he's basically kind of like the general manager as well. So he kind of makes his decisions. That's the reason why he didn't get the head coaching job at the New York Jets because they said, no, you're not going to have complete control of the roster. You won't have mm-hmm. the final say. So that's when he opted out and got the Panthers job instead. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so you said, Yams, you said they should keep Darnold, right? And draft a uh, QB in the draft? I say to either keep Darnold and draft Malik. And draft Malik. Now, okay, let's assume that Darnold is just not cut for that team. And, you know, you got to make moves fast. Do you think Malik is an instant starter? No, I don't. But so that that's the risk of drafting a QB in such a high ra- round, and you don't have a second or third round pick, so you're missing out on all that talent that you, that's going on in the second. That might be a, a, a steal or a sleeper, you know, mm-hmm. in the second, third round pick. That's the risk that they're, that they're going to take. So if they do take a QB in the first round, they're risking 
optional talents elsewhere in in the defensive line or or maybe i don't know somewhere up in, in the secondary that that's the risk that they're gonna take and and that i think is. if they want to be safe here they should stick with uh they should stick with their draft not getting a qb i think it's best for them to get something defensively and then they tried trading trying something new other than darnold but i mean like andy was saying there he it's his first year so maybe he just needs to get adjusted but i mean he didn't look that well with the jets but then you can also say the jets didn't have a good o-line and and he needs a better chance with a better team but i mean he's got a right. better team and he had a really really good team but he, it, it was unfortunate with christian mccaffrey getting injured and all that but I, I think personally, I, I don't see anything in Darnold that special. I would, I would go with either Baker or Garoppolo, trade, trade them, and, and look for something different in the draft, like a defensive lineman. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I still think I will. I disagree. I think Darnold can still be a good quarterback in the NFL with weapons, right? Even Tom Brady mm-hmm. can't do it alone. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm just ty- I'm, like all of these three options: Gar- uh, Garoppolo, Baker, it's, and Darnold. It's There's not always, an easy decision. No, it's there are issues with decision. all three of them. Yes, so, exactly. Uh, all three of them, and I don't want part of that. Why would I want to build off a <laughs> of part of that? So I would just draft the quarterback and these two, um, and uh, one of these, one of, uh, either it's Pickett or Willis, and and just hit him next to Darnold and 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 go from there. But they gotta do I mean, something though. They can't just sit there and, and do whatever. They gotta make some important moves here this season. Yeah, exactly. Or like we were talking about earlier, give that first rounder to the 49ers and get Debo. And Debo, yeah. And get Debo. That and would I mean, make them a very powerful offense, yeah. Exactly. I mean, you can after that, if you still are keen that you need to trade Darnold, um, then get Garoppolo in a way. But don't mm-hmm. you're nobody's gonna give a first round for Garoppolo. No, no, so, no, definitely not. So I mean, if you think that will helps, I mean, he knows Debo. He'll get Jimmy is like getting a part of the offensive, uh, the offensive weapons from the 49ers over to the Panthers, and you have Robbie Anderson, and you have DJ Moore, and you have Mc, uh, McCaffrey. So there you go. I just want, I just made him win the Super Bowl. Boom. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> nah. <laughs> They're in a really weird pickle because he's in the hot seat. So it's either build for the future or build for my future. That's what I'm saying. So, so yeah. I mean, there's some scenarios that you can yeah. do that he needs to. I mean, in the perfect world, they can they have to build for the future. But since he's in a hot seat, he's going to have to pull the his, trigger. Yeah. yeah, pull the trigger on some of them. Um, Which I don't think it's guys. fair, but I mean, it's just business, don't you think? Right. Yeah, that's just that's just life. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, if you're the the owner of the Panthers and you see the situation that's going on right now with the team um and you, i mean you see the weapons that they have and you know that i mean you you ta- i mean you're talking with the general manager and the coaching staff um trying to figure things out and with the quarterback position and other positions as well and i mean they're not they're not an awful team they have weapons and they're they're almost there so I mean, good coaches, very good coaches figure out ways to win with what they have. Um, I mean, and then there's the other coaches that you give them weapons and they just win. So, I mean, you have to figure that out with Matt Rule, what type of coach he is. Right now, he doesn't seem like the coach that's just going to win with whatever he has. Um, But... I mean, they're just. I mean, he the the owner just needs to look at everything and and just say, you know what? Hey, Matt Rule, um, you're safe. Um, just, I mean, do better each year at least. Win an additional game each year. Show us that you have that you are doing something better. But don't worry about like if you don't have a winning season or if you don't make the playoffs or something really high up, like you're you're gonna get fired. Like this switching coaches all the time, it doesn't work. You're always going to be switching and switching and switching. So yeah. you have to be consistent at some point. And this is too quick for, I mean, in my opinion, it's a little too quick to think of Matt Rule to fire him, honestly. Yeah. I mean, the Panthers haven't been to the Super Bowl since 2015. That was with Cam Newton. And it's, I mean, calm down. <laughs> 
I think I, I completely agree with you. I think it's way too early and, and they should be a little bit more patient because it, it, it doesn't strike right away with all these like things you're trying to do. It, it Success doesn't come immediately that easily as well. So they got to they got to be patient with this. And if they are building for the future, they got to go with the quarterback here because I don't think Darnold can be trusted again personally. Um, and it's a good opportunity for them to look somewhere else in the future for some other draft picks and start focusing in the defense after they pick up a QB this year and start developing him. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, if if I was them, I probably would trade Darnold for Garoppolo and get a quarterback so they can just in case Garoppolo doesn't work out because, I mean, we can all three agree that P.J. Walker has no chance <laughs> The backup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he did really well in the in the USFL, I believe, or was it the XFL? Uh, XFL. P. Walker. P. Walker. Yeah. Yeah. XFL. Yeah. XFL. X- XFL. It was the XFL. So he was doing pretty well in the XFL until I mean, COVID happened. But I mean, what he played? A, he did play some games while Darnold again not injured. injured as always. Um, <laughs> But if we didn't see him like being able to get to that position, so they do need a quarterback because it's the most posi- important position in the in the and any NFL team. So mm-hmm. I think Garoppolo would be a good like swap um, and just get a quarterback just in case. I know that they do need some. Maybe they need some help with the defense. But I mean, if you're trying to win and trying to say and trying to save your your butt as a head coach, that's what I would do actually. And maybe, I don't know, like I said, figure things out and be able to trade for Debo if you can. And because he's going to maybe even take less money because he's going to be home. So you have that leverage there that he wants to be living at home in Carolina with his friends and family. So, I mean, you do have some leverage there. I don't know in his contract situation if they have that type of that clause that that he has the say of where he's going to go like other players do. Um, But if he doesn't have a say, then then it would be that. I want to add to that, actually. Debo liked, I think he deleted it too, he liked someone's post where he was in a blue and silver uniform for the Cowboys. And someone said, oh, I like how this looks on you. And he liked it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Yeah, we saw that he's actually been hanging out with CeeDee Lamb. But I really don't think the Cowboys... No, me neither. uh, The Cowboys would go for it. I mean, they do have some... Maybe. Jerry Jones is is taking... Taking. Taking? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Ouch, that hurts. <laughs> that would hurt. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, they I if they I mean they did lose um they they did lose two wide receivers and it looks like the Cowboys are just going mm-hmm. downhill. If they do make this trade for Depot, that just puts them up in that in that map again to get to that mm-hmm. level again to the Super Bowl. Again. They're uh, always there. No, but not this time. If you if you see what they're doing, they're not doing anything. Hmm. And like you're saying, I mean, if if we're counting the TikTok thing, then maybe that's that's a situation. So, I mean, it wouldn't be bad. I mean, they do have the same agent. Um, CD Lamb and D- and Debo have the Debo. same mm-hmm. agent. So, and then he he liked. I know that he liked the comment. I mm-hmm. mean, I'm sure that he thought about the Cowboys. I mean, there's. I mean, players. I mean, there's a lot of players that like to be play for the Cowboys. I don't right. know if if he's one of them, but um, I mean he. I mean, it'll be interesting for sure. I don't think it'll happen, but you never know. I mean, it, it's it, it'll be very interesting, and they do need some help offensively. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah. That, that'd that be very interesting to see. I hope it happens, um, but realistically speaking, I don't think it will. I don't think Debo will go to Dallas, sadly. But who knows? Maybe. Maybe. Some kind of surprise. Um, but Yeah. Uh, you guys have anything else that you guys want to mention about these last three topics? Is, is that pretty much it? No, no. Just uh, people just um, look out for our uh, look us up on Instagram under football underscore tailgaters um, on Instagram. And you're going to see our exclusive content. We're going to start. Uh, we're going to try to put as much content we can for as possible for the NFL draft. Um, so that's going to be an exciting week for us. Yeah, great. Awesome. So we got this coming Thursday, the draft. That's going to be very interesting to see. We'll see if the Panthers take a QB or maybe they take something else and we don't expect it. Who knows? There's, there's going to be a lot of things going on there. It's going to be exciting. 
So uh, we appreciate you guys for listening. This has been Aaron, Yams, and Andy, and we'll see or we'll talk to you guys next time. Peace out. Thank you.